It's about seven o'clock in the morning on uh, June 1st. I'm noting the date because of when we're planting alfalfa here. This field we've had in a combination of three-way grain and corn for the last few years. So in some of our past videos, we've been out in this field and we had the grain this tall and we were cutting it and stuff like that. This field looked like that about two weeks ago. We cut this field with grain May 18th. There were several hundred bales of hay out here that we hauled and put in the barn. And now we're turning this field from uh, that three-way into alfalfa this year. And so we're rotating it back to alfalfa. We picked another field that we're gonna plant corn on. So we've just kind of made that transition. Now, ideally, June is not my favorite time to plant alfalfa but i had a decision whether to put another grain crop here and then plant alfalfa the first of september or sometime when that grain crop was done or just go straight to the alfalfa grain's not really worth anything this year i've got a lot of it so my choice was put the alfalfa in the ground some other things on the timing this a lot of farmers knowing they wanted to put alfalfa in this field would have just tried to plant it in april or early May in the spring. But for us, we make more money or more yield off this field doing what we did. So last October, when we cut the corn crop off here for silage, we brought this drill in here and we just drilled the grain right into the corn stubble. We let that corn or the grain grow or sprout in the fall. And then this spring it grew. And so now we've cut that four tons of the acre grain crop off here two weeks ago. And now we're putting the alfalfa in. So our amount of time that this field was out of production is very short, just a couple weeks instead of all winter time or, or things like that. So some of the problems we had with this field coming out of corn and drilling it directly into the corn stalks is we had all the, the ruts and the compaction from those corn trucks driving out here last fall. And so it was kind of rough and different things. So. And we're going into alfalfa, we want to make sure the field's smooth and, and it's really good. I mean, we're going to li live with whatever this is now for the next five years of our life, because <laughs> that's about the lifespan of alfalfa, you know, around here or what, what we do. And so we ripped it with a, a deep shank ripper to kind of aerate the soil and, and lift that. And then we dissed it and then we roller harrowed it twice. That kind of creates this tilt in the ground that, that we're looking at here, where it's not super fine. There's some little clods. There's a lot of organic matter from the hay chaff and the stubble, uh, root matter from the, the grain that was here. In this type of field preparation, there's room for air in there. When it gets wet, it's porous, so the water can soak in, and then we can get that ratio with a little air in the soil and a little water, like 50% air, 50% water. If we would have land planed this, it would have made it a lot more powdery, maybe a smoother, but more powdery. And then when you put water on that, there's no air in there. We beat all the air out and made the particle size smaller. And then it seals up like cement. I mean, an example of this is right under this pivot. We laid it under this pivot and we actually graded a lot of this to level this ground out but then we came back and roller harrowed this this part hasn't been roller harrowed again it was just what the scraper blade left and so you can see the difference in the soil type but a lot of it is very compact and very fine and as soon as i put water on that it's going to look like a sidewalk this is going to be more porous and absorb the water and give the seed a lot better chance to sprout and live and so that's kind of why we do the, the field preparation the way that we do. I'll come over here and show you the planter. This planter is a hydraulic drive planter, which most people watching this that have done any planting at all have probably had a ground driven planter. And so a ground driven planter picks a wheel that has contact with the soil and they put a sprocket on that and a chain and a series of gears. You decide how fast your cedar turns and how much seed you're putting out by adjusting sprockets and, and you're driven off the ground. This one is not. This one is driven off these hydraulic or orbit motors right here. So you have this hydraulic system where it's hooked to the tractor and the gears back here are actually driven off the hydraulics of the tractor. Now, in past years, there was a reason why they were ground driven instead of hydraulic driven. And that's because you couldn't control the hydraulics from the tractor 
in relation to your ground speed accurately, right? So you'd engage the, the valve from the tractor and it'd start turning something, but you had no control over regulating that to how fast you were driving. In today's world where these tractors have computers in them, the computer and the tractor can regulate how fast this is driving hydraulically. Now ultimately all of that is so that we have a better seed application and we're metering the seed more carefully. We can go up here and look at the seed. If you're planting alfalfa, you have a little tiny hopper box about this big and you put a little bit of alfalfa seed in it and then you run that out and stuff. And this is generally reserved for grains or bigger seeds. In this case, the manufacturers of this drill believe that the drill is so accurate that we can put quite a few pounds of alfalfa seed in here and we're not gonna waste it. So this little alfalfa seed I don't know how many seeds per the pound, but you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, whatever. They're tiny little seeds. And in this case, they're pink because they're coated. They're coated with um, kind of a clay type thing to protect the seed. A few little things on there. The seed size varies a little bit. I mean, in a grain drill like this, we could read a manual and it could say, well, for this size of seed or type of seed, alfalfa seed, adjust your grain drill to such and such a number. But because of the various coatings and sizes on seeds, they're all a little bit different. So when we set this drill up to start planting, we did a, a calibration test on this. We have a little specialized bag that goes on this drill. We can put it underneath five of these row units. Um, so right where these row units are, we, we collect seed out of five of these at a time. The tractor count how many revolutions this turned and then we weigh the seed that came out and so then we have the actual weight of the seed and how much pounds of seed is coming out per revolution of the turn and then we can put that in the computer in the tractor and it knows then how many revolutions per minute this gear should be making to get the correct quantity of seed out that we're trying to plant per acre which right on this alfalfa we're, sh we're shooting for 20 pounds to the acre to get a, a good stand and we're trying to plant it a quarter inch deep in the ground so again this drill has these packing wheels on the back uh, justin and crescent and i adjusted these yesterday by moving these wedges farther forward we're putting more pressure on the packing wheels and we're lifting this disc part out of the ground farther so the disc is planting the seed at about a quarter inch in the ground and we did that just by digging in the ground and seeing how deep the seed was and keep making adjustments until we get it right historically in the the old days, we really had a hard time controlling the depth of the alfalfa seed. If you plant alfalfa seed too deep, that seed's not going to be a viable plant. It's not going to make it to the surface when it sprouts. Having a set of packing wheels like this that actually adjust the depth of your things is very important in planting alfalfa. Grain, you can plant it an inch and a half, two inches deep and it's going to come out of the ground. But alfalfa seed, if you're under or below about a half an inch, that seed is buried and gone. It's it's not going to do anything for you. So we want it in that quarter to half an inch range is kind of what we're shooting for. And so here again in these drill rows you can see the impressions left by the packing wheels mostly. Right here you can see a little moisture coming up and you can see that under this dry surface there's moisture in this field. It's not dry dirt all the way down. There's some moisture there. Basically the only Dryness is just on the surface where we roller harrowed it again. There, there's moisture right under that, which again adds to the firmness of the ground. If this was really poofy, poof dirt and loose, we could bury that seed too deep. And then that poof dirt, when it gets wet, seals up tight, that seed's never coming out of the ground. Again, preparation and depth is key to the success of this planting operation. I guess today it is fitting I got my Stoats hat on today. The technology of this tractor and setup, um, it, it required a little bit of learning. <laughs> and so uh, Colton and the guys at Stoats have kind of helped us. Um, so here in the tractor, this is the planter monitor. So it, it basically can tell me everything that's going on with this monitor back here. If I look at information right here, this tells me that in this field, I've planted 48.66 acres and 
I've put out 955 pounds of seed. So again, most farmers <laughs> without this kind of technology would have been guessing, okay, how many acres have I covered from the outside to here? Am I about, you know, they would have been just trying to estimate that in their head. They wouldn't have an accurate acre count. And they would have been guessing how many bags of seed have I put in? How much seed's still there? Am I on track with my 20 pounds per acre? This way, I know, I can just do the math and I'm at 20 pounds per acre if my calibration's right. So we did that calibration in the beginning, weighing that seed and, and knowing our revolutions. So I'm gonna go back to my home screen on there. Another thing I'll point out um, on this tractor, this is my GPS screen. So the blue part is um, ground that I've covered. This is ground that I have not. So when I engage this drill, it'll start painting a blue line and, and then I, I can know what's covered. Now, that's not always important, but in the last round or two, I had a malfunction caused by me because I was playing around with the computer <laughs> trying to adjust something. But basically, I kicked the drill off and I wasn't planting any seed. Well, when that happened, that blue line stopped marking. And on my next pass, I was able to see that skip, make a turnaround and go and plant that part that I'd skipped. Where if I hadn't had this, I wouldn't have known where the skip was and I would have had a bare spot in my field. So anyway, that's kind of important. Anyway, this ISO bus is the system where the drill is connected to the computer of the tractor. And so we're just gonna go back to that and then we got the drill. So I'm gonna engage the down pressure on that drill, lock that in. Well, then we'll lock in the hydraulics for the actual planter and we'll start moving. Then I gotta just turn on that planter right there. Turn on my auto steer. So in the setup of this, this tractor knows that that drill is 26 feet wide. Out this window, we can see exactly where we planted before, but I can't drive good enough to put that exactly on there but the tractor can. So with the guidance system we have on here and the auto steer, you can't tell the seam between that pass row and where we're planting now. I mean, those, in, those drill rows will be one inch apart. They'll be right, right on. Again, the technology comes back to helping us not have any skips in the field where you had a driver error or any overlaps where you're wasting seed by overlapping. Now, on this screen, Josh, these, these two little blue bars with seeds tell me that each gauge of that drill is in, engaged in planting. And down here, it tells me how many RPMs each side of that drill is turning, the, the drive shaft, and then that's my miles per hour. And so, again, we talked about the hydraulic drive on this drill um, adjusting for your ground speed. If I slow this tractor down, um, you can see those RPMs on how fast the grain drill is turning changed or they reduced because the ground speed of the tractor changed. And so um, I'm now putting out less revolutions, which still matches my exact same seating rate. And so as the tractor speed changes, the revolutions per minute change and your seating rate stays exactly where it should be. Up here, this represents those two hoppers back there that tells me how much how many pounds of seed are left in each one of those hoppers that we looked at before and i mean as you sit here and watch these you'll see that kind of count down i'll see it just dropped a pound as it counts the revolutions down here it knows how many revolutions took another pound pound of seed out and again as we're making the pass around here i can check my information and my acre count is going up as we're covering the country. The amount of pounds we've put out is going up, uh, you know, and so we can, we can always see where we're at that way. Interesting to note that on my first pass on the outside of this field, it was over four acres of ground in one, one pass. 26 feet wide on the, the circumference of the circle <laughs> was, was over four, four acres in one pass, and so, now that we're farther to the inside, that's reduced quite a bit. I mean, there's information on this too. This tells me how far I am from the pivot center. This tells me how far I have to go until I hit the end of the field again. 
This tells me how many uh, rows I am from the pivot center. And so, and if this was planting not correctly and I needed to make adjustments, I can bump it in one inch increments inside or outside. This up here tells me my satellite service that I'm operating off the RTK signal, which RTK signal is the most accurate. Basically, we have a base station up there at pivot three, and the base station is triangulating the satellite signal through a radio signal to the tractor, and so that it's sub-inch accuracy. It's ver very accurate. Um, if I was not operating R RTK, and I was just on SF1, which is just a direct signal from the satellite, then it's more like a sub-foot accuracy. There's, there's a little more error in that. But again, when we're planting like this, and, and those drill rows have to be right on the money, the RTK is you know, the way to go. All our tractors don't have RTK domes. Some, some just have the, the normal satellite dome. So like an arrow, he's spreading compost up there on the north field, and he's not on RTK but he's doing a 40-foot a pattern scattering manure, and if he's off a foot, it doesn't matter, you know, nobody notices. <laughs> but uh, on this, where you want that grain, one drill right next to the next, the RTK makes a big difference on some of this. Anyway, I just thought, you know, sometimes planting alfalfa is boring, but there's a lot of failures in planting alfalfa. It scares a lot of people. A lot of people have lots of theories about how to do it right, and a lot of farmers avoid it because they don't want to have a failure. Doing all the things we're doing with this drill, again, hopefully makes it financially good, and, and, and also we'll have a great success when we bring up the crop. But this alfalfa seed, this variety I'm planting here costs a little over $5 a pound, so you don't want to miss by very many pounds on this or else it's a <laughs> it's expensive mistake, right? You probably just caught that cement and stuff in, in your picture, I don't know, but we're going across the ridge right here, which we leveled somewhat when we prepared this field, but the old timers in this used to have cement ditches that they irrigated with. They didn't dig them out <laughs> correctly when they went to wheel lines. And then when we took it over and put pivots here, we still have that ridge, and every time we rip through it with that ripper 16 inches deep, we pull up more cement. And it's, it's really not very fun. But again, when I'm done with the planter and finish popping stuff to the surface, I send, send my kids out here with a, a, a little Polaris Ranger, and, and they can pick up all that cement that's on the surface again. You can notice, like over behind that pickup and over on the other side, we have piles of that cement that we pull out of this field, and it's not not our favorite, favorite thing. But again, there's a lot of things hydraulically and stuff that I could drive, but if I touch that, well, I'll start into my turn here, but if I touch that, it shuts that off and it lifts it up automatically, see? So we're turning sharp back there. If we turn this sharp with those down, it would put a lot of side pressure on those discs. But just by touching that screen, it lifts it up and stops it. Now I don't know exactly where to go, so I can push that and that tractor will find its next line. And then I can push those and it dropped it down and started turning again. I'm, I'm planting again. It's really nice on the turn to really re-engage that auto track because again, it goes right back to right where it needs to be instead of me trying to have to find the row or whatever. And you notice that beep when we got close to the pivot, that was kind of a beep of, hey, wake up, you're close to the pivot. You better turn around. So, that's about all I got on planting alfalfa.